It's Cloud Illusions, I recall. I really don't know clouds at all. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, everybody. I'd love to see who the first of you can tell me where that quote came from. You old timers should know it right away. You know where that quote came from? Really? Where? Ooh, I'm impressed. Well, don't tell anybody. I want to see who out there knows right away. Today we're going to do some sky studies. I'm a little rusty and I've been wanting to do this for a while. Now, I've harped on this in the past and I'm going to harp on it some more. You're nothing but a harpy. Yeah, you better believe it. Studies are a way to get to know your subject without pressure. You're doing one thing and that's learning, understanding the subject, understanding your media, understanding how certain techniques work to render a certain subject. I cannot impress upon you enough the importance of doing studies. Anyway, clouds, skies are great fun and I'm going to do four. These are spontaneous. I have not predetermined what I'm going to do, but I'm just playing with color. I'm playing with wet and wet washes. I'm playing with fluidity and generally just brushing up on my cloud techniques and seeing what I can achieve. On to the demo. Well, I'm using a Saunders Waterford paper, St. Cuthbert's Mills, the UK brand, really nice paper, 100% cotton, cold press. It's a high value brand, or I should say a high quality brand. And now I'm just taping off the sections that I'm going to do this demo in, four little, oh, I wouldn't call them thumbnails, a little larger. I'm using acid-free art tape and then just burnishing it down so the washes won't seep under. Now you'll see me do this in just about every sky. I just pre-wet the paper to get it nice and soaked. Everything is pretty soft, and I want a nice soft wet and wet blend. A lot of times it takes a couple coats of water to get the paper thoroughly soaked. Now here I'm just tilting it so that it runs and evens out in certain ways. You can manipulate the flow pretty well just by tilting and letting your washes flow this way and that. This first one I just thought I would try for a nice wispy, kind of an overcasty day. I'm using Payne's Gray and Ultramarine Blue. And just dabbing the colors in at an angle. This is a paper towel and I'm blotting out where I want it to stay white and I want the flow to stop. So the paper is staying pretty damp so I can continue to work it. It doesn't flow as fast or as quickly as the paper soaks up the water. But as long as there's a sheen, it's continuing to be workable. I, I just toning in a little bit of purple down at the bottom. The dox, dioxazine, whatever it's called, purple. Blotting out a few more clouds. And I'm pretty happy with that. That was a quick nice little expressive sky so I'm just gonna let that one dry move on to the next study this one uh, again wetting the entire background this one I wanted to do in phthalo blue maybe a little bit too intense for a sky but hey what the hey you know that's the thing about studies you can try whatever you want and see what works and what doesn't and I'm doing a graduated wash I want it to be fairly deep and intense at the top and graduate out to almost nothing. You'll see me go back over it a couple times and add some deepening tones at the top and even out the wash. This time I'm using tissue and I'm going to blot out some kind of billowy clouds in the foreground. I'm going to try to make a couple layers of these billowy clouds. It won't completely come up, 
um, especially with Thalo Blue is a high staining paint. But you can get a lot of it and uh, it again it stops the flow or the spread of the moisture. Now, I wanted some clouds in the foreground. I started to do them hard edge and then decided to blend them out. I'm blending them out here with, with a clean brush and clear water. A lot of times in skies, you just have to deal with what the results are giving you and, and kind of see if you can make it work. I didn't know what I was going to do in each of these, so I'm just looking at what's coming about as I paint and deciding how I want to add to it or what I want to try. So, just adding a couple darker layers. This is maybe kind of like what you would see uh, billowy clouds in the distance or maybe even flying above them, you know, like out the airplane window. Decided I want to add, add some contrast behind a couple of these clouds just in places just to pop out their shape. So I'm adding some little dark washes there and then you see me here blending them out with clear water. So they blend in with the background. Again, uh, you can see better now how I'm modeling these little points of low lights behind the clouds. Clear water blending there. Adding a little more drama to the clouds coming in from the left in the front. The sight of this probably is should be more of a twilight sky. So I wanted to deepen and add some streaks to the upper part. And again, I'm, I, I, I'm bringing some contrast behind those lighter cloud shapes. I've, what I've done is totally wet the top, re-wet the top all the way down to the lighter clouds, painted around them. Again, tilting so that the flow, I can manage which direction the flow is going. These all look kind of splotchy at the moment, but they will soften out. They'll soften out and blend with the background. And the paper's starting to buckle, so I'm just making sure that it doesn't settle down in that valley. This particular block's pretty good about the paper drying flat. And here I'm just cleaning up the edges, reestablishing some of those cloud shapes. And I think that's about got that one. I don't want to do any more to it. I like it. So on to the next one. Totally wet the background, and now I'm just going to speed it up because a lot of the strokes and applications are the same. But with speeding it up, you'll actually see all the strokes. I've kind of gave you only bits and pieces of the top two, so you could see it in real time. This video would be an hour otherwise. But this one speeded up, and um, I, after wetting the background, I toned it with quinacridone gold and some. Uh, red iron oxide. Now I'm just streaking it a little bit and I'm pulling out some highlights. I'm going to do probably two or three layers on this one. The second layer I painted in clear water and I'm dabbing into that clear water this this violet Payne's gray mixture. I want these kind of dynamic clouds that are in front of the sunset. And I'm leaving hard edges and soft edges. So the clear water that I painted in um, will do that. It goes to the edge some places and in other places it bleeds out. It just leaves these nice little wispy streaks. I wanted to graduate the top darker to the bottom you know, starting dark and getting lighter. 
In retrospect, I probably should have sprayed that with a mister at the top, and I ended up finally doing that. Uh, you get an overworked look if you paint over deeper colors too much with water. But it didn't, in the end, it was okay. It didn't do too badly. I got the graduated effect I was looking for. And again, I'm just managing the flow by tilting. And I like that. Well, on this last one, I decided to take a chance. I thought if I could create uh, some intentional blooms, they make for nice clouds. Uh, intentional blooms, but creating them uh, deliberately sometimes is trial and error. What I use is this fine line applicator and it's timing. It has to do with timing and how much the paper has dried or starting to dry. This is the effect if you do it right. It makes these neat little kind of bloomy shapes and they look like clouds. So this is what I was trying for. Um, you're going to see here though it doesn't work out. Uh, I didn't have the wetness of the paper right and it just tends to flow over the top. The other mistake I made is I let that little fine line applicator scratch the paper and I ended up with lines on the paper. So I just, in the end, I would just went ahead and blotted out the clouds again with a tissue. At this point, it's trying to salvage something that didn't work. That's okay. That's what studies are for. And we'll just see what we can do with the rest of it. I'm using some hard edge cloud shapes in the front. But what you're going to see me do here is come in with clear water right there. I'm slowing it down so you can see this. Clear water and I'm hooking the edge of those that wash. And what happens is it takes the edge off of certain places and, and causes the flow to soften in just those spots. So you have some hard edge and you have some wispy edge. Nice little cloud effects. Just lifting highlights here. I'll put the brushes down in the description. This is a Princeton Neptune Oval Wash, a number one. And that's a Da Vinci Cosmotop Spin, number 14, also an oval wash. Also known as Cat's Tongue, both of them. Just adding some purple and deepening the sky to kind of bring the colors in line. All in all, this was not my favorite and, you know, ended up just trying to salvage what I had. You know, I decided the one up in the top left looked more like a mountain shrouded in mist, kind of rising to the right. So I put a valley floor at the bottom. That's kind of a neat thing you can do sometimes with spontaneous painting. And there's the finished bone dry pieces. Very successful, and ironically, the one in the lower right is the one I learned the most from, even though I had the most trouble with it. That's the value of a study. Well, that's just another example of how I approach studies. I hope you'll give it a try. The important part is I'm giving myself permission to be free, to be loose, to be experimental, to be expressive, to make mistakes, to learn. If all you're doing in your art is trying to produce finished pieces of art, you're going to learn much more slowly and you're going to frustrate yourself and it's just going to not be as fun. Let me just say, okay, that's a study. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you'll give this a try. If you like this, hope you'll give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of this content, then subscribe. We'll see you next time.